Hey YouTube, welcome to my personal vlogging channel. In hopefully the light's a little bit better in this up in this recording, as my voyage video lighting sucked. I did turn the light on in the work area to get some light coming in from over here instead of directly above. But now that I think about it, I relied heavily on sunlight that came in through the window that's on this side of me that you normally can't see. Um. So yeah. A lot of my friends have actually asked me about the dock dropping that I mentioned in my previous personal uh, video, first personal vlog, and uh, how did I let that happen? Well, to me, that's not that big of a surprise, as I've screwed up and accidentally dock dropped myself once or twice. Usually, I'm like, okay, whoever got my phone number, they have it. If they bug me too much, I'll block them. It's no real big deal. So, I, you know, got rid of the information where I accidentally dock dropped it. Cause most of the time it was on Facebook. I accidentally dropped myself, dock dropped my phone number on Facebook when I was signing up for text messages, text message notifications. And then I accidentally dock dropped myself on uh, Twitter. I deleted that tweet. I don't even know how I pulled that off. And there was one or two other times, but most of the time I screw up and give my personal cell phone number to people instead of my business cell phone number. Usually that's not a big deal. I try to give out my business cell phone number as if that gets dock dropped. I want that number out there. It's a business line. I'm trying to start up a business again. And um, that would have helped me. Also, my business line, I shut off when I no longer need it. But, oh well, what can you say? But anyway, I'm a member of several, several, well, a couple websites for people that travel and also people to get to know other people, mostly social websites. You go through my friends list on, on Facebook, you'll see a lot of Germans, Russians, people from the UK, British, I guess. Um, I had an English person get pissed off at me for calling him a British person for some reason. Um, a couple Australians, definitely Canadians, but that's no big shock. I'm not joking, I could probably walk to the Canadian border in a couple hours. I can definitely drive there within 30 minutes. I was actually thinking about taking and shooting a video on the Detroit River or one of the rivers looking onto Canada, with Canada being my backdrop and, you know, naturally the camera in front of me. Um, some people liked my previous voyage video where I was in the park. I wanted to do that for this one, but I had a little problem. My mother's car had issues, so I had to be home so that she could use my car when she needed a car and you know naturally we had to share my car it's in her name so it's her car <laughs> um but anyway I met a friend of mine uh, a, a friend of mine I met a friend this way through another friend so there's a little I met a friend through a friend Alright, uh, but this was a couple years ago. Now, this friend I had only known online, so, and, and this was three years ago. I had only known online. Didn't even know I was talking to a girl for about a year and a half. Uh, so, um, then this year, beginning of summer, she was coming to the United States. I was like, ah, oh, cool. Um, I'll see you if I can. Now, she was going to Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. That's why in my last video, when I said the IP address came out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, I said I knew exactly who it was. And if I had the ability to go down there, she would be in a world of shit. I should have said she would have been, because I intentionally waited till after September to actually let anybody know that I had found out about this dock dropping. Uh, because 
She was due back in Russia uh, September 27th. And I was dropped in the beginning of August at some point. Um, I didn't realize until two weeks after me and her had a little fight with me not knowing when I could come to Kill Devil Hills. And there was a lot of red flags with this, so okay. So we unfriended each other on everything. I even have her on block on a few websites. Um, just because I didn't need to deal with any of that. Um, she's just not blocked on my uh, Skype account. Ah, uh, now, a couple, a couple weeks after this fight, I get a phone call at 4 o'clock in the morning. Two weeks after, I should say. Now, my friends who know me know you don't call me after 11 p.m., or actually 10 p.m., really, uh, or before 6 a.m., or I'm not a happy camper, and you and I are not friends for that day. Uh... I've actually personally got pissed off and uh, answered the phone in very rude ways to people who have called me in between those two times without my permission. Usually you have to send me an IM and some instant messaging client or a text message asking if you can call. Even if I'm sitting there watching TV, wide awake, and you know I'm wide awake and you call me and it's in between those two hours, I'm going to be pissed. So, okay, I'm a little pissed. But it was a prank call, so I figured it'd go random number. Next day, 3.30. I get woken up to my phone ringing. Well, now I get pissed. Well, my phone has caller ID. My cell phone has caller ID, and it also tells me the name of the city in which the person is calling me from. I'm not sure how it does it, if it just goes off the phone number where it's registered or what. But either way, it tells me the name of the city. So that's what I did. I went... Oh, yeah, you're calling me from yada, yada, yada. Yeah, I've already tracked your phone call. Now, no harsh actions will come to you if you tell me where you got this number from. So he gave me the website. And then I did a simple who, who is search. I'm not going to specify any of that in this video. And in that who is search, uh, <laughs> Yeah, in that who is search, I got the the webmaster's name, uh, phone number, email address, a physical mailing address, which did not go to a P.O. box. It went to an actual house. And a few other things. And this guy was trying to start up a competition, like a website to compete with WordPress.com, I think it is, or it's WordPress.org. One of them you could download the WordPress software for your own website, and the other one you could get your own blog. Or he was trying to compete with Blogger. I'm not going to go into whether or not you should even try to compete directly with either of those two, but either way, that's what he was trying to do. So I sent him an email, and in that email I contained his name, his legal name, his phone number, again his e email address, and his mailing address and then told him why I was writing to him and then to take down the this one post with my phone number in it and then I wouldn't take any actions against him those were my words and then he took it down and then sent me a an apology email with an attached file that contained the logs for the user that posted that post this user was on twice once to register and then logged in again two days later to post the information that had my name and phone number. And um, an area in which I think they believed I lived in, in Detroit, but they gave a suburb. They said I lived in Birmingham. I fucking wish. <sighs> but anyway, I was like, okay. Actually, I, when you Google search my phone number, you know, do one of those where's the phone that it actually states I'm in Birmingham, Michigan. Uh, so, you know, knowing all of this, I went, okay, I know. And then I looked, oh, here's an IP address. Let me look up who registered, because there was two different ones. The person that registered was it came out of Nogs Head, North Carolina. 
which is just south of Kill Devil Hills. The second IP address with that who who is look up was directly out of North Carolina, Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. So I knew it was this this one girl. So I contacted a few of my friends um, who are in law enforcement and they started to look into it in such a way that um, it almost is like a formal investigation. When she goes to reapply for a visa, it will come up. It, it will actually come up, this little incident. And it will interfere with it won't stop it, but she will have to answer some uncomfortable questions about it. Uh, so in a way, it'll interfere with any future visa attempts for the next couple of years. I've been told it will only usually last for two years. And then uh, it'll pretty much get dropped off. I, I, you know, I did look to see if any of my friends who would possibly do this was down there. None of my friends who would stoop this low are techno technological enough to use any kind of tour network to get down there. And neither one of those IP addresses, when I pinged them, were using any tour information. Now, one of the times that I was chatting with her, I was testing out a C program that used a network protocol. So I was using a packet sniffer. And when I use packet sniffers, I use them on all, I have them capture packets on all packet ranges. And for me, Skype, I have it configured to only use the base Skype uh, port so that I can have um, test websites on my computer as Skype tends to block port 80 inadvertently. Most people, it don't matter. But if you want to set up your own website on your own computer just to test, it does matter in that point. So I have that set up. So I decided to go, okay. I can actually just take this log that I had saved, reload it back into my packet sniffer, and filter out everything that's not a Skype IP address. So I did that. I mean, it's not on the Skype port number. And then I found Kill Devil Hills. Now, it's not her exact IP address, but it sits on the same network block, which is also a strike against her, in my opinion. Now, a very well, she very well could never have done it, but evidence is kind of stacked against her. Um, now, the username looked like somebody bashed on the keyboard, you know, one of those kind of troll-like usernames, and I really didn't, st and the email address was to one of those do not disturb me, no spam email address websites, so I can't get nothing off of that. So. Uh, I hope this actually answers some people's questions. I went into length. I kind of rambled a lot. But actually, I should talk about what actually got the little argument of me not going down there. When she sent me an IM in the beginning of summer stating she was coming to the United States, a couple red flags actually struck me in this one, in this instant message. One, I tend to be, I am the one that tends to be flirtatious in most of the conversations that I have. But here she is calling me dear, which I thought was a little funny. So I was like, okay, you know, I got some car problems. I did. At that time, my engine blew out. I was rebuilding that. My lower intake manifold gasket blew out. And I have a Chevy 3.1, so that's a load of work in itself. Then... You know, as summer goes on, I'm chatting with her, and, she, you know, when I, I see you online, sometimes I'll go, hi. And, um, if you don't answer, hey, you weren't at your computer. I do that a lot, too. I'm not at my computer. I'm not going to answer. Um, I do have a lot of things on my phone. And a lot of my friends actually wonder why I am always on my computer. Sometimes that's the reason why. I'm rambling again. Ah. Uh, but, you know, I would say hi, and if she was on, she would go, or I'm sorry, if she was not on, later she would go, oh, I'm sorry, I was sleeping, I was not at my computer. And I'd go, oh, no worries, no big deal, I knew you weren't at your computer when you didn't answer, or you were busy. 
doesn't matter. Um, but she would never say, how are you? She would say, when are you coming down? Um, whenever I can. I would usually say I'm trying until the end of the month. I would just keep stalling and stalling and stalling. Uh, end of July, I went, oh, I know when I can come down. Um, probably in the next week. But I have to do some services on my car. I never specified that I needed to just do an oil change, but I went, I gotta do some services on my car. She kind of backed up and then she started calling me names. I'm like, uh, really? I gotta do services on my car? You don't even know what they are. How do you know I don't have to fill up the uh, tire pressure? Check the tire pressure, which in a soft piece of software that I use to track car services, it registers that as a service. So, hey. So, yeah, okay, fine. Uh, about a week later, I say hi. She kind of blows up. And something else. And then one day, it just kind of kind of turned into a huge blow up. I went back at her. She came back at me. I uh, called her names that I probably shouldn't have. But at the same time, she was calling me names too. So, ha. Uh, anyway. I went, that was it. We had unfriended on Facebook. I blocked her on Facebook. I uh, blocked her on a few other websites. She's not blocked on Skype, but was removed on Skype. Uh, so, uh, and then, again, two weeks later, I found out my information was online. All right, time to deal with this, and then I dealt with it. All right. Um, sorry, I was a little bit rambly and all over the place. I'm not usually good at talking about personal stuff, which I consider this as. Under normal circumstances, right at the end of her visit, I, if she was close enough, I would have driven down there and been like, "Aha! Look what I did." Because even if she marries an American, it's going to come up on the visa to get back here as a spouse, a spousal visa. So her trying to get back here it will come up no matter how she does it all right um have a nice day